Welcome to the Profits in Pajamas podcast. I'm Danielle Deteach, or Coach Danny D, and I help women to create luxury brands by creating processes and tightening their branding. This is where we talk about how to build your business in a way that allows you to work with ease and enjoy your life. My happy space is spending as much time as humanly possible in my pajamas. And I want to help others to find their happy space while still running profitable businesses. So get comfortable and let's dig in. Hello and welcome to the Profits in Pajamas podcast. I am your host, Coach Danny D, and I am here showing you how to live that life that you want as a business owner. So for me, it's pajamas because I love to be in my pajamas. For you, it may be travel, spending time with your family, whatever that looks like, whatever time freedom gives you, that's what we're here to discuss. How can you be profitable in your business, but also have that balance of life? So again, I'm Coach Danny D. I also am the owner of Workflow, where I help people build their luxury brands. I have a wonderful guest here today. I'm so excited. Um, I know some of my audience is local, some of my audience is not, but if you are, you know, local and you know, you grew up in New Orleans, you listen to this person every morning on your morning commute. But she's been so many places beyond the radio. Um, so I want to introduce to you guys um, Miss Monica Pierre. She is a Emmy Award winning news reporter. Um, she's in public speaking and storytelling coach. She's my storytelling coach and mentor. And she's the executive producer of the Powerhouse Woman Show. And if y'all have not um, seen that show. She has a show on YouTube, the Powerhouse Woman Show. If you haven't seen it, you need to see it. It's a, you know, it comes on every Thursday and it is full of so many gems and so many brilliant, brilliant women that she knows. Mm-hmm. Um, Monica is also a professor um, of practice with the Department of Mass Communications at Xavier University, my alma mater. And She teaches podcasting, broadcast announcing, and storytelling to the next generation of aspiring media talent. So I want to welcome you to the show, Monica. It is my pleasure. And for those who may say, what is Monica wearing? I actually have, it's not a pajamas, but it is a robe. So I I hope that I am here properly dressed for profits in pajamas. Okay. And so for those of you who maybe, you know, this is your first episode Um, we do the audio, but we also do the video on YouTube and we literally are in our pajamas because that's how seriously we take this. And if you know Monica, you know that she's a lady of elegance. And so this robe is giving every bit of the elegance that I know Monica to be. You're very kind because otherwise we'd be in my husband's (laughs) t-shirt. Hey, hey, look, I'm not... I'm not opposed to a good, comfy husband show. Uh, oh, wonderful, wonderful. But I'm so excited to be on the show. I got to know you before the pandemic for a public speaking workshop. And I was always just looking at you. And when you would speak, everyone would stop. Because when you spoke, it was of wisdom and no nonsense. And people were attracted. So I'm so excited to continue the you know, connection and also work with you with your story and getting your voice out into the world. That, that I'm not going to cry. You're not going to make me cry. I'm not going to cry. Um, <laughs> no. Yes. But, I, but you, you said that to me and that really, um, you said that to me one time before and that really like struck a chord with me. And then, you know, I had someone else echo that. And I was just like, I, I, I guess I never thought about it. I just, you know, I never thought about it like that. But I know in the time that I've known you, you have definitely shifted my view and my comfort in telling my story mm-hmm. and being more vocal and, you know, 
in in even just speaking in those spaces. So I want to, you know, thank you for that. And I I really want you just to, you know, today's episode is really going to be about the importance of storytelling. And I couldn't have anybody else come on this episode but you. So I want you to tell the audience, what is your connection to storytelling? I know it's, I don't even want to call it a passion, it's a love of yours. And I want to hear more about that. How did you get into it? And why do you feel like it's so important? Thank you so much, Coach Danny D. And when I think about story, I have to go back to that little country girl growing up uh, in Southwest Louisiana, sharecropper's daughter. You know, we, I was the oldest of, and the oldest of five with my parents. And story was always there. Somebody's story. You know, we were laughing and going, I don't know if this is true or not, but it sure is funny. It sure is memorable. So I've always was connected to story, even before I knew that there was such a thing as storytelling or people telling their stories. And then I love television. I love you know movies that you would watch on TV. I just love the story of those. And that's what I would remember. And then my professionally, I became a reporter. And it's all about telling someone else's story. It was always about how do I get this assignment, find the people to talk to an interview, but pull out from what they tell me those important sound bites. They, they really have dignity. I was always trying to say, okay, I am going to tell someone's story in the most dignified manner that I can. That when they look at it, even if they're crying, even if they're, it's a hardship, even if they've lost someone, they still have that dignity. Mm -hmm. So I just really began to examine story, the power of story, and of late, the role that story plays for entrepreneurs. Because I would interview people, whether they were entrepreneurs, whether they were the, the actually were the people who were doing the nonprofit world work. And I said, how do they tell their story? Because it's just not about where you're located, what your phone number is. <laughs> it's what people remember, the why or how you started it, how you decided that you were going to continue to go on even through the challenges. So I'm, I'm shifting a little bit to help people who are entrepreneurs, particularly first generation entrepreneurs and business owners, first generation founders, first generation leaders, who are getting people to see their vision in addition to the stats, in addition to the six figures or the seven figures that they're making or aspiring to make. What is it that people are connecting to? And it is the story, the story of you. And oftentimes that's the last piece entrepreneurs want to embrace <laughs> or want to talk about is their story. And again, what is it that you're all about? Because we all start off with, hi, my name is Monica Pierre and I, you know, I do the Powerhouse Woman Show. You go like, okay, but how do you get them to lean in, to want to hear more, to want to know more, to want to spend and invest with you? That is the power of story. So I am I'm in love with stories now. I've become <laughs> obsessed with stories. In fact, I was just on a call. I was I paid for a, a, a webinar on the power and the art of the big talk, the art of your story. So yeah, so you can get me going with that one. <laughs> no, I know it and I love it. I love listening to people that are excited about a thing, especially a thing in business that um talk about it like that is like you know I, I can sit and listen all day long to someone talk about their passion but it is again that art of story that draws you in and with the you know advent of you know social media and the you know widespread um understanding of branding we we connect to brands and we connect to brand stories and so that's how we you know, outside of just, you know, some of the basic things that you may purchase, how you decide a lot of times is based off of that story. Absolutely. And the connection because story and, and what story, the true story, not just the all fixed up story and I made six figures and I did this and blah, 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 and everybody's so happy, but it's the vulnerability, which is the key and oftentimes 
business owners, entrepreneurs don't want, people who are just hesitant and resisting to telling their story, they don't want that vulnerability. They want to be, I had an idea and I woke up and I did it and here it is. <laughs> yes. And that's not the story. Think about the stories or the movies or whatever you stream and binge watch. If it was like, hey, everything's great and there's no conflict, there's no aha moment, there's no coming from point A to point B, you're not watching that. That is okay, you know. Right. <laughs> you know, right. everything That's is like wonderful. A minute episode, you know, like <laughs> okay, yeah, you can tell that in twenty seconds. Okay, everything ended up, and she lived happily ever after as a business owner. Right, know? right. But it, it's the journey. It's the story. Is the you know figuring out how you're able to side hustle it for a while and then decide that this is you know I have to do it now. You know I, I was talking to my brother and, and he was sharing that you know he has this job now. It's been five years since he lost quote unquote his good job and all the things that he had to do from selling cars to standing on his feet to working in a warehouse, being a supervisor, all of those things. So he gets it, and then there's like another conflict. You know, he hasn't started his onboarding yet. So it's another delay. That's how life and business and story, it's the conflict. It is getting and being determined that you're going to continue on no matter what, because this is what you are meant to do. This is what you want to do. And you're willing to be in it for the long haul. And that story is what people connect to. That story is beyond the profit margin. That story is beyond hey, now I'm hiring people who have a team now. That's great. That's wonderful. You know, for those researchers out there who are deciding that they have their PhD now and they want to have their own business and be a researcher and, and work with parents, the PhD is great. But guess what? The actual families are going to connect with. The kids are going to connect with. The story of you is what mm -hmm. they're going to connect with. And it's not only it's powerful, but it's repeatable. And it's memorable. Yes. You know, you can tell, you told a story about me at the beginning. Those of you from New Orleans, you heard it on the radio. It was part of the morning drive because what we did on the show was memorable. Yes. And impactful. So your story hits those marks. Impactful. It is going to be memorable and repeatable. So when someone says, oh, I want to do X, Y, and Z, you have to call Coach Danny D. Right. Right. They know your story. They know what you're about and they can tell it as well. So you're telling the story for you and your business, but you're also telling it for the customer experience and that customer who will tell it and repeat it to yeah. someone else. So it's very powerful. Yes. And, and, and I really, really wanted this topic just because I think we shy away from it as entrepreneurs. We, we definitely we just want to get up there and get going. And what we don't realize, and especially tying in this whole work with ease, that story, that building that identity and connecting with your client with that identity does a lot of the work for you. Absolutely. That, that is a great point. It does a lot of the work for you because, you know, when, when you have the courage to tell your story, and to know that your identity and what you're putting out in the world is based upon you, right? You're able to get to the point where that's what you're doing. You know, you put some processes in place, yes, but because you've had the courage to tell your story and share your story and recognize that your business is the story of you, that a lot of the things, now you're spending time you know, thinking about your business and talking about your business and, and, you know, sharing the vision of your business as opposed to, oh, it's midnight and I got, you know, I got two more hours before I go to bed and get up and <laughs> do my nine to five or I got to get this order done. It, it There's some more joy in it. And then your story becomes an inspiration to others. Yes. So think about all the people in, you know, we read about in history. I'm a Madam C.J. Walker fanatic. It's like I, her and Oprah. I know their stories probably better than I know my own story. And it's like, what did she create and have the vision? And she had a process. She'd go into towns and she'd connect with the churches and she would you know, do demonstrations with her products. And then she'd get people to be agents with her company. And then she'd go on to the next town. 
but it was her voice. Yes. It was her story, being born two years out of slavery, all the things that she endured, being a washerwoman and saying, what is going to happen to my daughter if my back gives out? What And she became this entrepreneur and this philanthropist. But it's because 100 plus years later, we're still talking about Madam C.J. Walker or even more interest in Madam C.J. Walker is because of her story. And she was the one to tell the story of what she did. So if you're hesitant as a business owner, an entrepreneur, if uh, you know your, your brand, you're the best person to do it. And I'm not saying you have to be all perfect. Everybody's not going to be Oprah and sound like Oprah. But when you come from being authentic and being vulnerable and being able to not only have the story, but open to sharing the story and telling the story, you automatically attract the right people for your business, for your company, for what you're doing. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. And one of the things I was hearing when you were talking about Madam C.J. Walker was just not only the story, you know, help you in the current, but then it, you know, it creates legacy. She's legendary because of her story. Right. She's legendary because that's a great, great point. And, and think about, you know, what you're doing, Danielle, with, with the show, Coach Danny D, and the clients that you're working with and how you're helping other entrepreneurs with those, those brands. They're going to be talking about you and studying you and remembering you two, three, four generations after you're gone. It wasn't the, the number that she was in today's dollars over a million dollars that she created, but it was the story of how she started, the story about how she had the guts and the courage when people told her, especially when she wanted to leave the Midwest and start going to the South and other places, well, you're not even going to make money. You're not even, you know, you're going to lose your whatever, you know, but she decided to do it. That's what we're connecting with. It wasn't like one, two, three, everything happened. It was the challenges that she was able to persevere. And then the vision of a life far beyond growing up in a shack two years after slavery, right. living in Mississippi and her first husband dying, you know, she was a widow and a mom you know, before she was 20. It's that kind of perseverance and how she was able to see something that no one really around her was able to see and put that out there. So that's why we're still talking about it. And it's that story, not just the statistics of what she created, but the story of what she created and, and how it resonates with us all these years later. We still love what she did, no matter what. And what I just heard was, when you infuse your story into your business, it gives your business life. Mm, yes, it gives your business life. And your business continues to live on. Yes. It continues yes. to live on. Yeah, that, yeah. That, I, I love that. I'm, I'm glad that you, it resonates with you and you picked up with that. Because when you tell your story, you're telling it for me, the potential client, potential customer, the customer but you're also telling it for yourself to remember why, right. why you did it, why you started, why you continue to go on, why it hasn't been easy, but you're still there. It gives others life and it gives you life. And it's a gift to tell your story. And, you know, we get all bogged into where do I stand? How do I hold my hands? You know, how do I start? What's the middle? What's the end? And all of that is important. Important. But you know what? There was a man who happened to be my father who died seven years ago. Everybody loved him. Not because he was an educated man, because he was not. He could not read nor write. But when he spoke, he was willing to share who he was. He was willing to share what he had. He was willing to be there when you needed him. The story. And so when he died, the entire town showed up. Other, my friends from New Orleans showed up. My brothers, frat brothers from all over the country showed up because he not only told the story, he was the story. Mm -hmm. So I would just want to encourage all of those who all of you are watching, you know, 
it can be scary, sure. There's some techniques, absolutely. But your business is alive and has life because of your story. Don't make it the last thing you do <laughs> and work on. No. Do it now. And if you're out there talking about your story, find other places in which to talk. I mean, there's so many good podcasts that you can share your story. You know, when you even network, you can find a version of the story to share with them. And that's what they're going to connect. So the next time you go to a networking meeting, a voice saying, hi, my name is Monica Pierre. Don't start there. We'll start with a little bit of the story. And then say who you are. <laughs> right. And, and and you're so right because those stories are the things that are memorable. Because I'm, you know, I'm going to be honest. I'm not the best with names. But I will remember about a person. Like, I'm like, oh, she has three dogs. She has two kids. They, you know, they had this whole ordeal at Disney World. You know, I remember all of that. And I'm like, I don't know what this lady's name is. Right, but right. I, I feel connected <laughs> to her. I know her. But that's the things that you remember and walk away with, you know, are those those details and those things that connect us all, those things that, you know, well, I experienced that. Or yeah. I may, you know, I may think that I can't do it. But if, you know, Madam C.J. Walker can do it, given her, you know, what she was up against, then now I feel confident. Now I feel like I can because this other person did, it's just, you know, it's so many levels to how powerful story is. Right, right. and how powerful your story is. Because oftentimes, well, I'm not Madam C.J. Walker. I'm not Monica Pierre. I'm not Coach Danny D. True, but you are who you are. And your story is unique. So even if there are a gazillion speakers, a gazillion people who are in the balloon industry, but the way you do it, the reason you started is so different and unique. That's the story. It's not the fact that you, you know, you're in the balloon business. That's important, but it's not the reason. That's not giving your story life. It's the way you approach it, what you have experienced, what you've come to learn, what you've come to appreciate, how you've, you know, with the day that you almost quit. <laughs> right? That right. did not <laughs> Look, we all have those moments where it's like, um, <laughs> I don't know. Right. And how you push through self-doubt and second guessing. That's the story that right. people are going to connect and remember with. Remember, and when they're at that midnight hour moment, when they want to quit, when they are rolling their eyes at, at the, the person who's going to write the check and go like, oh, I don't know why I said yes to this. <laughs> There's right. more right. aggravation than anything else. <laughs> When they remember how you keep going and kept going, it's going to help them. So I don't think it's it's a good idea to tell the story and your story. I think it's imperative. I think you have no business not to tell your story. You know, and I'm going to be bold with that, and I'm going to I'm going to just be in no, your face. But now. you're right. You're right. You're a hundred percent right. And you know, I know in my own business when I had the courage, and I'm going to put that out there like that, when I had the courage to come from behind the scenes in my business, it changed the dynamic of my business. And I was, you know, initially a little hesitant because I'm like, okay, well, I don't fit the same demographics as my clients. I don't know how that's going to fair out. And I was a little hesitant about that. And what I found was I my relationships with my clients became so much deeper because they were able to see me, know me, and have a greater connection. And um, last week's episode was about, are you a commodity versus a luxury? So if you didn't catch that episode, go back and watch that episode. But I'm saying that to say, you know, when you when you step forward in your business and when you share your story in your business, you you automatically shift yourself from being a commodity. Because what you don't want is for someone to be looking for a balloon decor company or an event planner or a, you know, whatever it is you do, fill in that blank. You don't want somebody to be looking for that. You want somebody to be looking for you. 
Absolutely. And they look for you because they know a little bit about your story or have heard about your story. That's why they're going to look for you as opposed yeah. to just Googling everything or doing an internet, uh, internet search for somebody who can come and set up some balloons. Right. So that is why it's imperative for, again, for your business. It's imperative for those you serve and it's imperative for you. You have been given this and it's been given to you through the story of who you are. Right. So, it, it, so we get to the point now we, we, we stop playing, being shy. We <laughs> stop be, you know, worrying about the impact it's going to have on others. Who's going to be looking to my right, looking to my left, who's going to be judging me and tell it because there are a lot of people who were on the air when I was on the air. And they were giving the news, but I was the one who is remembered for motivation, encouragement, just a breath of like, okay, it's going to be all right. One of the reasons why I wrote my first book, Found My Soul in a Sweet Potato Patch, was because for those who are not from the New Orleans area and didn't hear the show, it was very simple. My partner and I, we were working on the morning show. We were the number one show. Actually, we were number one in the market for 15 years. And it was hip hop and R&B, it was fun, it was craziness. But 30 seconds every morning at 7.25, they'd stop the music, I would come on and I would give a word of encouragement. And it was 30 seconds. And then people were going like, could you send me a copy of what you said this morning? Yes. Um, what? And that went on for a little bit. And then I said, okay, I'm from the country, but my, my parents, you know, they, they can recognize something. So I said, I want to write a book about the, Mo the Monica, Monica's moments, but I want to write a book about my family and the story of how they believed for their home for 30 years. Right. And that's how the book started. But again, so again, you're telling your story and, and the story is often more than just I am a sharecropper's daughter. And blah, blah. the story has a bigger universal or global theme. Yeah. Everyone can understand perseverance. Yes. Everyone who can understand not giving up or giving up, but getting back up. Yes. Those, that's the story. What is your overall arching story? What is the impact of your story? What is the theme of your story? That is what it is. Yeah. Your story may be, I started the balloon business when nobody believed in me, when I had $39 in my checking account, whatever it is, and it was going beyond what I could see and see beyond that and yeah. be beyond that. And it was about being what I wanted, even when I didn't think I was ready. So that is the story that you're going to be sharing and telling. Not that you started your company in 2017. That's important. <laughs> it's deeper than that. When you think about a news story, whenever I would cover a story, there would be some facts because facts are important, right? There would be a who, a what, a when, a where, a how. But the most, to me, and I've been covering stories and doing stories for a long time, it's the why. Yeah. In your story, you get to tell the why, why you're doing it, why you keep going, going, why you want more, why you want to create something, six figures, seven figures or beyond, why you want to do it for the generations to come, why you want to be the model for your daughters and your sons to say, you know what, we can create something of our own. We can call ourselves entrepreneurs. We don't have to always work for someone else. We want to do this because we know it's going to build a legacy. We're going to stop a generational curse in our family of being broke, broken spirit, broken hearted. We're going to stop all of that. And it's going to begin with me. And I'm going to be the one to carry that story forward for generations to come. So a hundred years from now, they're talking about what you created and what you built in your family and in your world. I love that. I love that. And one thing that I want to just before I forget it, I want to throw out there because this was um, initially in my process, something I struggled with was um, 
a lot of, you know, of the, you know, motivational speakers and different people that, you know, you may follow have a, you know, quote unquote, tragic story. And I can remember when I first started, you know, opening myself up to, to that side of things. And I can remember thinking, well, you know, how can I, I, I don't have that story. You know what I'm saying? I don't have that story and feeling like, well, what is the thing that I can say that's going to make sense up against, you know, I started at, you know, in poverty and, then, you know, like I don't have that story to tell. And so then it made me feel like, well, maybe I should just go sit down and be quiet <laughs> because I don't have that, you know, compelling story to tell. But you know, I, I, of course, got past that. And, you know, when I started working with you, it, it, you know, it was like totally different. Like, you have a story, you know, you have a story. And we've, you know, gone from, you know, workshops to, you know, to the incubator program, which I'm going to give you an opportunity to talk about in a moment. But, you know, while you were talking, it made me think about a conversation that I had the other day with one of my... um one of my clients, and she was talking about an episode, a previous episode of the podcast. There was a guest on there, and she was just like, oh, my God, I didn't know this about this person. And I was like, right. I'm like, when we did the pre-interview, I'm like, we started with one topic, but we ended up somewhere else because of the conversation. But even in that, it, she didn't come on and give a whole, you know, she just told her story and that connection that was there, you know, in that story. So I just want to say that because I don't want anybody sitting there feeling like I don't have this, you know, I don't have a story in me. You have a story in you. And your story is right there, just waiting to come out. I mean, it's, it's not like over there. It's right here. And it's ready and willing and waiting on you. And you make a, a great point, Coach Danny D, because people think that it has to be horrific. It has to be you came through the fire, literally. But no, conflict happens in different ways. In the story of you and what you're talking, the beginning, the middle, the conflict, the challenge, that is part of the story. And on the other side, the transformation, the lesson learned as well. So if you're hesitant about being the voice and stepping out there and talking about your story because you don't think you have this horrific or family tragedy or you lost a limb, and there are a lot of people who motivate us through sharing that story. But there are an awful lot of people who motivate us about, you know, the story of my brother. My brother's story over the last five years has motivated me and encouraged me beyond measure. Here's a young man, and he's my brother, so I guess, I, you know, yes, I'm biased, who had, at the time, a one, a, we're sharecroppers, remember now. Now, we never starve, but you're a sharecropper, we're eating. You know, right. so even though we were poor, but it wasn't like we were like, I don't know. I tell people we had a lot of food. In fact, we ate too much. <laughs> but over the past five years, when he, quote unquote, lost that good job in management and had to figure it out, but said he was going to do what he needed to do, because that's the legacy of my father, who okay. said, no matter what life hands you, yeah, you can cry for a minute. But then you got to get up, in his case, start the tractor and go plow the fields. So we, that's the legacy of what my father taught us, is that stuff is going to happen. Even though you're faith-based and even though you believe you're nice people, it doesn't mean that trouble and change won't come knocking on your door. But you get up and you do what you need to do. And over the past five years, that's what my brother has done. I mentioned he was, you know, he sold car. He, and again, I didn't mention that he drove. He lives in Bossier City, Louisiana, near Shreveport. He would drive to Houston to oh, work wow. every week. Wow. Every week. And he would figure out a way, you know, he said, I want to be with my family. So when he would get off work at the warehouse's last one where he was working, 
he would actually get off at 10 p.m. and drive to the Shreveport area. So he could be with his family a full Friday, a full Saturday, and then get in his vehicle and drive back to Shreveport, from Shreveport to Houston on a Sunday. So that is the story. You know, they, again, he was, he figured it out. He did what he needed to do. That story of resilience. And I'm, and I know that trouble and this situation will not be forever. And I'm going to do what I need to do to support my family. That's legacy. That's a story. So again, you have so many stories out there. Yes. You know, So many stories. So what I do, you mentioned the incubator is say, okay, let's look at some of the personal stories. Let's look at some of the business story or the entrepreneur story. Let's look at some of the other things. And what is the theme of your business or the theme of your story that's universal, that someone who may be in South Africa can go like, okay, yeah, I'm not driving, you know, but I'm walking. I'm walking to the next village. To right. take care of my, my, you know, I'm staying up late at night, working my full time job, and I'm going to night school or, or working on my PhD. We all have those types of examples that we can use to show that we're willing to be in it. We're willing to not give up. We're willing to fight. We're willing not to say, "Well, I because you know I have, I have an MBA." My brother could have said, "I have an MBA," you know. But he goes, I have an MBA, but I'm going to take my MBA and I'm going to drive from Shreveport right, right. <laughs> to Houston and I'm going to stand on my feet for 12 hours and I'm going to sell cars and do whatever I need to do. I'm going to keep applying for jobs and positions. I'm going to go through the process. He must have applied for a gazillion jobs. Right. But he did what he did. And we all have those kinds of stories. We all have those stories where we want to go from baking those pies and enjoying it to selling those pies. And we have the stories of when we have the courage to say, we're going to do this and be this entrepreneur. All the people in our circle who used to eat our pies for free. Right. (laughs) Won't spend $12. (laughs) Yes. A pie. Right. Right. We we have those types of stories. And those are the stories that we have, I I call our inventory Mm-hmm. Our story inventory that we can start making note of, and not just for the sake of telling the story about my pies, but telling the story about my pies and what is the universal theme of that. So that's what we work on. So yeah, you have a story right there. Yes, we need to come out. So you know, so uh, I, first of all, if you are struggling with the story. I'm going to tell you right now, and I'm going to give, you know, Monica the opportunity and I'll have in the show notes how you can get in touch with her about the incubator program. But what I want to, I mean, so I hope you don't mind me sharing this. But no, of, go ahead. One, I don't know what you're going to say. So this is- <laughs> one of the exercises was, you know, she gave me a certain number of stories that I could tell that I had to write. And she said, I need you to give me 15 stories that you can write. And I was like, 15 who's? You know, I didn't say it out loud, but that's what I was thinking. Well, your face said it. Your face, you know. (laughs) You know, my face tells everything. My face is not loyal. It tells everything that I'm thinking, right? So I'm like, 15 stories. But once I sat there and started breaking it down, it wasn't as challenging as you may think. And the reason why I'm sharing that is that it's not even that you have one story. You have several stories. And, you know, it sounds intimidating going into it. And, you know, I I just I just want to because, you know, I always call you all out in this in this process when I'm when I'm sharing something with you, especially something that I, you know, have gone on the journey. I want to make sure that I'm I'm hitting all of your um, objections. Correct. Correct. Because I want you to know that, you know, I had those objections. I, you know, I don't like being the center of attention. Like that is not my comfort space. Um, but I've learned, you know, how important it is for your business, for your growth, for your development 
to put yourself in that space because if you're not highlighting who you are, then your client doesn't know who you are. Your client can't make that connection and your client is not going to then be eager to do business with you. So you have to own that. And that wasn't always an easy thing. And that wasn't something that I, you know, I actually, and I've shared this with Monica, I actually, when when I did her first, she um she had a program that she did prior to the pandemic. And when I did her first program, I saw the the flyer come across one of my networking groups. And I looked at it and I saw it and I was like, stop looking at me. You know, like I was literally <laughs> looking at my computer, like stop looking at me because I am not doing that. Like that is not, I am not doing that. And I, I told myself years ago, if the only reason I'm not doing something is because I'm scared, then I have to do it. Mm. And so I looked at it like three times and I was like, oh. and I went ahead and submitted that payment. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> and, but it was one of the best decisions that I made um, for several reasons. One, stepping out of that fear, not letting that fear dictate what I was going to do. But two, you know, working with Monica and working with her through the process, because she's, she, she does it with such, you know, ease that you don't, you know, it's like you, you, you're being pulled out of your comfort zone, but you don't even feel it all of the way, <laughs> you know, wow. because of how she maneuvers because of, you know, because she, you know, she's an expert at what she's doing. So if it, it feels easy, even though it's something that you're uncomfortable in. So I just wanted to share that but it also changed the way that I was looking at my business because I was still trying to solidify some things. And, you know, in the more that you work on and know your story, the more that you're clear on your identity. Because like Monica said, it's right under the surface, but sometimes it we need to sweep away some of the cobwebs on it polish some things up but it was that first experience that really shaped how i then looked at the business my confidence in the business cuz i'm like oh, okay okay i already knew in my heart what it was but to be able to verbalize it yeah right is a and different so thing and the courage to share it. Yes. Yeah, the courage to share it. And in, in everything, like your business, your luxury brand, it's ever evolving. Yes. The story you will uncover and discover today is not going to be totally the story that's a, a year from now or two years from now. It may be a different story. It may be a deeper story. Because sometimes we say, okay, I'm going to tell my story. And especially if the story involves others, we don't want to go and share the whole thing. We determine that it's going to be maybe a composite. And then as we feel more comfortable, as we grow, you know, I start to share the story about how oftentimes in my family, we've had to I mean, go to war with fear mm -hmm. in my family. Fear is a, is a constant. I always say it's almost like we all, we lived with waiting for the, the next shoe to drop. Mm-hmm. So I've begun to share more and more of that because I think it's important that people say, oh, well, of course, it's easy for you to tell a story. You know, you won an Emmy. Uh, yeah, you know, you, you cover stories all the time. But it's like always there's a part that says, OK, go deeper, go deeper. And when you go deeper, there's more vulnerability going deeper. So let's start with the story today. Right. Right. And we can uncover more and go deeper later. But I think not to tell the story is the disservice. To resist that little story that say, I want to come out. Let me out. Yes. Let me out. You know, ADL. <laughs> yes. Let's start doing it now. And the world needs it. I know everybody has said this now more than ever. Yes, yes. If you don't intentionally tell your story of your business, of your life, it's not going to be told. 
Yes. It's not going to be built. And with social media and with the changing of traditional news and who the gatekeepers are, because at one time, only certain gatekeepers said what stories would be told. Yes. It wouldn't be the story of Coach Daddy D, right? Right. But we get to tell our story. You now are the gatekeeper. Right. You're the news director. You're the publisher. You're the editor. You're the decision maker. You get to share that story because it's important. And the only one stopping you from sharing that story is you. Yes. It's you. You know, yeah, you can hire people. I, I believe in social media managers. Uh, that's, I'm not trying to say don't hire them, but you have to be the one to know your story first. They yes. can't make something out of nothing that they don't know. I mean, yes, they can look at when you started, you know, what your sales are, blah, blah, blah. Eh, okay. And, and, <laughs> and that's that gap, you know, because a lot of people will hire a social media manager and then they say, well, this is not really my voice. But if you haven't honed in on what that voice is and you're not, you haven't put it in a way that is, you know, able to share you know like you said you know how well you know you know oprah story and um you Madam know Susan Madam Walker, yeah. story it, it it you could write something about you could write something in their voice because that's how well you know their story and if somebody took over you know, let's say they switch social media managers, you know, over in Oprah's camp and that person didn't do their homework. You, you could read a post and be like, what? Like, <laughs> what no. has happened is yeah. like, you know, it's it, 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 born it, in Jackson, it, Mississippi. That's not her hometown. <laughs> like, like, is, she, is she having a stroke? Like, what happened? Are you okay? Blink twice if you need help. Like, because you know that voice. But mm -hmm. you that that starts with you, and you have to develop that to be able to then translate it. Because I'm a big believer of you know hiring out for services, but oh, you yeah. got to be able to trans. You have to sit and figure out this story first, right? One to be able to translate it to others, but two because every part of your business should be built around this story. Oh yeah, that's that's good. That's good. Because like, you know, when I, you know, when I teach people about branding, the thing about branding, we think that it's just colors and logos. You have a brand story. That brand story is designed to connect to your ideal client. You need to know what that is first. Or if you already are in business and don't know, you need to sit down and figure out what that thing is because every other decision in your business should be made based off of that story because that's how you create client attraction because now you know that I might like blue, you know, everybody knows blue is my favorite color. I might like blue, but what does that read to my client? Mm -hmm. I might, you know, I might like, you know, a particular style, but what if my client is more subdued? What if my client is, you know, so you build everything off of that. Like, this is who I am. This is the client that I serve. And that connection of those two things is what's going to take my business to the next level. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, you, you made the point about when you're clear, you make decisions. You yes. know what to say yes to. You know what to say no to. Years ago, when I was doing public you know, PR, and everybody said, "Oh, everybody can do PR." You've done news, and I'm going, "Well," so I did it. You know, <laughs> and there was this one client. Um, you know, she had heard about me. We met, and you know how sometimes when you have that feeling deep down inside, you might want to run in the opposite direction, but you mm -hmm. don't. You still keep going toward it? Been so there, now, done that. <laughs> she said yes to work with her. And again, it was an industry that she knew about that I didn't really know about, but you can learn things. And what I realized later was that she wanted to, as my husband say, fly over and under the radar. Mm -hmm. She wanted people to know she had this service available, but she didn't want them to know it was her. 
she didn't want her. Yeah. So again, the things she wanted to hire someone to be the face and the voice and the name. And I'm going, but so it, you know, long story, very short, <laughs> it didn't work. Yeah. So I ended up <laughs> refunding the check and go like, okay, yeah. this, like, this never is never mind. Really bad. It's gonna be, <laughs> it was a disaster and it wasn't gonna get a be yeah. a better <laughs> fit. So again, she wasn't willing to be the voice and the story. She wanted someone else to do it, but didn't know how to articulate that. I at the point didn't 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 have the guts to say this is not going to work. So no, I can't yeah. I can't work with you. So when you know the story, when you know your brand story, and and you're clear about what it is you're doing, it helps your business to grow because you don't get in the muck and the mire of doing stuff you have no business doing. Correct. I had no business doing that, but Correct. because I wasn't clear. And I was like, Mikey, sure, it made sense. Why? Right. Why wouldn't I be able to figure this out? But right. it was it was a good lesson that I learned, but yeah. it was not a good fit for me at all. So knowing and being clear helps you to say yes and say, you know, everybody's doing it this way, but for my audience, my tribe, my customers, my clients, whatever you call them, I know them so well. They know and trust and like me, right. they would go like, what? Why is it doesn't so make be doing that? It doesn't make yeah, any it sense. It doesn't make sense. And and, and I, I totally agree with you. That's like one of the things that when I start out with a client that I work on is like figuring that part out. Like, what is it about you and your business? What is what is that? You know, so that we can put everything else in alignment. And like you said, it makes everything so much easier because I've been there, done that with the you know, oh, Jesus, why did I sign up for this? And now it's so abundantly clear to me at onset, this is not going to work. Like, this is not, this is not a fit. This is not going to work. And now I can, you know, no matter what the situation or dollar amount, just, I know it's not, it's not what's in alignment, but I, I had to know what, that underlying story was first to even be able to make those types of decisions. So stop running from the story. Even if you're still scared to stand in front of an audience and tell the story, still don't run from uncovering the story. Yes. Because yes. the story is necessary and it needs to be told. And if you still you know, want to, you know, hide behind the computer and tell it behind the computer screen, it still needs to be told, you know, and as you grow your, you know, confidence, then you can, you know, take it to the next level. But that story is it's the core. Mm -hmm. It's the core. It's of the utmost importance. So um, I want you to talk to them about this incubator program. Oh, my goodness gracious. Uh, can I tell you the journey of the story uh, of, of me as far as yes. supporting and coaching? I was the most resistant person <laughs> to call myself a coach. Oh, gosh. Oh, I'm a motivator. Oh, I'm a coach. And I said, but you have been coaching and supporting people forever. But no, 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 I'm not a coach. I'm not, no, no, everybody's a coach and the mom is a coach. So finally, I had to be, you know, yes. <laughs> talk to myself very sternly about that. Again, when it comes to stories and helping people uncover their stories, it's like, who better right. <laughs> to help people than you? I mean, this is what you love to do. Your face lights up. You are genuinely interested. I think what, one of the things that made me an outstanding reporter in putting a story together was because I listened to what the person I was interviewing was saying yes. and that I wanted them to have the story communicated with dignity. That is very important to me that even if it's tough, even if he, and one story I did years ago when I worked in television, it was a young couple and their little infant child was dying. Oh. And they didn't have money to bury him. And I worked at the, the uh, ABC affiliate in New Orleans at the time. And my job was to like have solve problems. I'm the action reporter. I'm the consumer reporter. And someone said, this family needs help. What can you do? I'm going, okay. So I went to the hospital and here was the young mom. And, you know, you could hear, I can still hear 
the life support. Yeah, you can just you still hear the sounds of the room all these years later. Mm. And the husband said, "You you do the interview." And the mom said, "Okay." And she was talking about the baby and you know how the child wasn't going to live and the, you know the, the, they had made the decision to remove the baby from life support and the baby would be gone, but they had no place, no money to bury, no mm. no nothing. Yeah. But she started talking and she broke down crying. And I had a decision to make. I could leave the tears to get the sympathy. Right. Or I could say, and this is what I did. I said to the photographer, turn the camera off. And I said, I want you to be as strong as you can be to tell this story and to ask for help. Because again, Coach D, Danny, you're losing your baby. Yes. And you're on the air begging for money. Right, right, you right. Know, how, how much courage does that take? Yes, yes. I said, when you are ready, we will turn the camera back on and we'll pick up the interview. And she did it. And he said, you can do it. You can do it. And we it was a beautiful interview. And we put the story together. And of course, you know, the phones lit up and people yes. were just throwing money at this family. But but again, you know, when we when we tell the story, and I kind of lost my thought <laughs> you know, a little bit, but, but I, I, I realized that I love helping people tell their stories yeah. even before I recognize that I'm a coach helping yeah. people tell their stories because yeah. I was doing it before. So now I'm over that. I'm over myself. <laughs> and yeah, I'll talk I think, myself. I've had those <laughs> moments where I'm just like, <laughs> you know, I, I had a similar struggle in the Lord. Like, mm -hmm. he, mm -hmm. said, I, he said, look, I didn't sent this to you three different ways. And <laughs> actually somebody did a live um, some one of one of my sister coaches did a live, and she was talking about um, you know, your resistance to that thing, and I was just like, so you just gonna make it plain and clear that you're not playing with me, and I need to just let this go. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna make it plain, and we're gonna make it clear. So yeah. yes. So uh, it has been made abundantly clear and plain <laughs> to me and to the point where God said, remember that couple you interviewed? Right. And, yeah. So so what we do with the, the incubator is called Tell Your Story Incubator. And it's to help founders, entrepreneurs in particular, thought leaders to discover their story, develop their story, and deliver their story. So we, we go through the phases. We know I don't have a story. I didn't I didn't survive a plane crash. What story do I have? We, we go through that process of what is the story to get. And again, there are a lot of stories that you can tell. And there could be stories that you will tell later on. But for what you're doing now, what is the best story to tell? What's the universal theme? And that anybody, whether you are doing the balloon business or not, can relate to. And then from there, how do you develop that story, the beginning, the middle, the end, the transformation, the, the conflict, and tell that story and then develop a larger talk that you're going to give and how the story fits in there. And then the delivery, because most people say, well, I, I'm nervous. I don't know what to say. What do I do with my hands? We can focus on the delivery as well. But then once we go through developing and covering, developing and, and, and doing it, we're going to take that story and your talk and we're going to format it different ways so that if you're doing an introduction of yourself at a networking event, you can include that story in there really quickly. If you are the speaker and you only have 18 minutes, doing a TED talk, only have 18 minutes, you can have the different ways in which to deliver that story. That, And then once you have that formula, I call it the prep model, Plan, read through, edit. Edit is important. So we're editing a lot of stuff right now, <laughs> Danielle. And then the practice, and we're going to learn the difference between practice and rehearsal. Practice is where you take it segment by segment and start to get comfortable with it. And rehearsal is doing the whole thing. So by the time you're there, you're able to be on more podcasts. You're able to tell people why you do what you do as opposed to what you do and what it's called. 
the name of your company. You are able to, if you want to do bigger stages, you're able to do that as well. So that's the program. It's it's eight weeks and we have been rolling <laughs> very, very fast. But I, I, I want people to know that your story is important to be told. And, you know, I won't be tough, tough, too tough love, but it's time to stop playing around. It's time to stop playing around. Well, like you might not be too tough love, but I will. It is, it's, it's, it's very, very important. And like I said, even if you don't feel like you have that courage to stand in front of millions and tell the story, um, I mean, Monica's going to get you there, so we can just leave that wherever it is. But if you don't feel like that, it's still important to your brand. It's still yeah. important that you know what that is and, you know, what that looks like. Because otherwise, you're just another balloon business. You're just another... Um, you know, lawyer, doctor, whatever it is that you do, you're just another one as opposed to you being that person. Right. Um, you know, I shared on that last episode about commodity versus luxury. And I'm just going to tell the short version of this story, but I had a client, we did multiple locations for her and um, she was having a grand opening literally next door to a party city. The receptionist says, oh, well, we can go next door to Party City to get balloons. And my client says, oh, no, Danielle handles our balloons. That's where you want to be. That's the connection that you want to make to your clients. But if you're phoning in the, 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 the really, you know, soul of who you are in your business, then you won't make that connection. Right. And because that person knows your story, able to repeat it. Right. Oh, no, Danielle handles it. And then she could say Danielle had because she's a person of integrity or she, you know, she, she gets everything. I don't have to worry. So that's the story. Right. That's impacting your brand. That is getting you the clients and the caliber of clients that is loyal. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It might be convenient, but it's not going to happen. Because right. Danielle handles our balloons. Right. Yeah. That's that's brilliant. That is amazing. And that's what you want. That's what you want. And to the part about maybe you don't, you don't want to do a TEDx talk. Not everybody wants that. Or speak internationally. Not everybody wants that. But now there are moments when you can share your story when someone says, huh, what do you do? Right. Now you know. The story is there. Right. The connection is there. And then you can build from there if you want. And as you mentioned earlier, Danielle, you need to get that story out. And you That's know it. And you know the story. Because I, I, here's what I know happens. And maybe you can talk about this. The confidence is built muscle by muscle by muscle. Yes. The Danielle who said, why are you looking at me <laughs> when you got the flyer <laughs> the information <laughs> before the pandemic? Uh has traveled to this part, you're doing a podcast. Yes. You're, you're in the incubator. There's more yes. ahead for you. So, yeah. So, yeah, you, you may not be able to see it all because you'll get scared. Right. No, Nervous. just take it one step at a time. It doesn't have to be. Yeah, because, you know, if I was thinking about a TEDx at that first point. Right. I don't know if we'd have made it past. Right. <laughs> yes. No. I know. I used to but, laugh at people. They would say, Oh, you you you're great at what you do. You should be on Oprah. I'm gonna say, even if Oprah's people called you today, you probably would say no anyways. <laughs> no, it, I mean, but it's just like you you need to be able to do that on a small scale to be able to do it on a big scale. Correct. And you and it does change your confidence when you know. You know, you already know what you do. You already know why you do it. All of that stuff is in there. Like you said, it's on the surface. It's there. But if you can't articulate that to someone else, you know, how many times have you met somebody at a networking event and they give you this like, you know, five minute explanation of what they do and you still sitting there like, 
Now, now, what did she do? Like who? What? When? Why? Like I don't. I don't want to. Uh, okay, and you just nod, and smile because well, that's what you do. Right. You know? yeah. But you have no understanding of what that person really does because they haven't worked all of that out, and they're right. like you said, they they may be telling the facts. Mm -hmm. There's no emotion there, and uh -huh. so you, as soon as you finish hearing that. You kind of like, oh, I think they might be an accountant or something or something. You know, you you, you that's going to fall out of your head after you've talked to 20 people at a networking event. Right. But when somebody can convey that emotion, can convey that, you know, that, you know, why they love what they do, that sticks with you. Correct. And you're not going to forget that about that person. Right, right. And that's going to be the connection. Whether they call you that afternoon or two years later, you know, right. there are a lot of people like we go like, I'm going to work with her. I'm going to work with her right. one of these days, you know, and, and, and they mean it. And they absolutely mean it. Maybe not today. It's it's a not now. It's not really a no-no, but it's a not now. And they you know, you're going to be in touch with them because they remember. And they no telling how many other people they have been talking to about to you about, about you to them. And they're like, yeah, you got to use her. You know, you got to use him. So that's why we tell them. And it's good. The world needs your story. And to be brave, to be the one to tell it, yes. not to hide. Because again, even with the best PR firm, I'm not going to interview the PR firm. I'm going to interview you right. on my show. You know, right. I want to hear the words from you. I want to hear how the passion is there, even after all these years. Right. It comes from you. And you know? especially as small business owners, you know, there are large corporations that do most of the things that small business owners do. So if somebody wanted a nameless, faceless, you know, interaction, they could have that. But people go to small businesses because they want something different. They want to know that they are helping a person. They want to know that their money is, you know, sustaining a family. They want to know what that backstory, you know, is, yeah, um, yeah. you know, I was in a program, um, a lady, she's in Baton Rouge and her son used to do lemonade day and my son used to do lemonade day. So it, it, it resonated with me and her son, um, I think he has autism and he, he fell in love with the lemonade day. And now they have this huge lemonade brand that is so big that they are like, you know, trying to figure out the growing pains of it because every store between Baton Rouge to New Orleans wants this brand in their store because it's become that popular. And, you know, of, of course, the, the, the lemonade itself is quality lemonade. That's why everybody wants it. But that story is what got them on the map. And that story is what everybody remembers. Absolutely. And, you know, I was in that program with a lot of people, but I remember that, you know, because I remember the story associated with it. And right. it's, and the story connected with me because my son used to do, you know, lemonade days. So I'm like, oh, that's so sweet. And that's the thing is like, you know, I know if I go to Baton Rouge, I'm, I'm going to go see if I can find that lemonade. So now I wasn't sitting around looking for lemonade, but now I'm seeking that to support that brand. Right. And you beautifully recounted the story. In fact, here in the New Orleans area, there's an article on on, on Leroy's uh, stand today. So yes. it builds upon itself. And you, when you share your story, you never know what connects. Yes. You know, so it was this connection with your son, yes. you know, somebody who heard the story of my dad, it may not be necessarily sharecropping, but it could be, well, you know what? My dad was similar. Everybody loved my dad too. And when he passed, everybody went to church and to the yes. funeral too, you know, or, you know, yeah, I'm a single mom and I have done so many jobs. Yes. And I, and I know what it was like to, you know, to be tired and not complain. So your story will resonate in so many different ways. And yeah. again, you said, I'm not seeking lemonade, but if I'm in the, you know, if I see that brand, I'm buying that brand. And that's yeah. where the loyalty becomes a factor as well. Yeah, totally. And 
you know, I know we touched on it a little bit earlier and, you know, I just wanted to hit on, because you talked about the vulnerability of telling a story. But, you know, that Danielle that was trying to hide from the flyer may not have felt this way, but there is, there is power in vulnerability. And I've learned that, you know, slowly over time, there's power in that vulnerability. That vulnerability feels uncomfortable in the beginning, but it leads to freedom. It does. It does. And sometimes, Danielle, people think vulnerability means you are just boohooing in the corner and can't get up and get your words out. That is not what we're talking about. That vulnerability that says, you know what? I don't have to be perfect in the story. Right. Right. I don't have to be the hero in the story. The story of the, you know, that midnight hour where I was going to quit. Oh, I was scared, but I did it anyway. Right. That's vulnerability. Or I started to speak and my mind was going blank and people were looking at me and it took all I could not to run off stage, but I smiled and I did it. And the first few words were cracky. <laughs> My voice was trembling. But the more I stood, the better it got. That's vulnerability. You know, that is what people are connecting. Because anyone can say, oh, here's how you do it. And it's great. And I can find that information on the internet anywhere now. Right. But I am willing to put myself before you and out there for you. And that's what people connect with. Yes. You know, you know. That's what people connect with. You know, some people that I've met, you know, they don't talk about growing up as sharecroppers. That's my beginning. That's my right. roots. Right. You know, but don't get it twisted. Do not want to farm. My right. <laughs> husband is always talking about, we can get chickens. I said, no, we cannot get chickens. <laughs> get chickens. You know how hard that is? You know, chickens are kind of like messy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, chickens yeah. are messy. You know, rabbits are messy. Mm -hmm. But it's like, don't let these urban farmers convince you that this is easy work. This is right, hard right. work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But but it's always been the story of family and faith. Yes. And some fear. And some, yeah. And oh, some that's fear. always, There's she always fear. in the background. She always. Always in the background. So, and, and always working through that. And yeah. if you go from just starting your business to making thirty or forty thousand dollars extra on the side to saying I'm going to do this full time and make your first six figures and your high six figures and there's always a new level, yes, of doubt and fear and second guessing. There's always that. So yeah. you you know you share that vulnerability with the people you serve or you're with your audience. That's what we're talking about. Not breaking down crying and people got to take you off the stage. We're not talking about you, that. You control it too, you know, because I know some people, you know, are worried about, um, I've had people say that to me, well, you're so, you know, you're so open and I am open, but I also have control over what that looks like. It doesn't, you don't have to take it to where you don't want it to go. You know what I'm saying? You still control what you put out there and what you want to still maintain is private. And sometimes as you go, and the reason why I say it, you know, to me, vulnerability is freedom. I think when we start out and, you know, a lot of times because of our upbringing, we are, you know, you got to be polished. You got to be this. You got to be that. And you have this, you know, kind of stiff image of yourself that you put out there because that's what, you know, you're supposed to, you know, that's the professional. Yes. Thing, right? Yes. Um, so you have that, but as you start to become more vulnerable, then you're, you start to not have to manage all of that. You know, you start to not think about that as much and you start to just be. But again, you control what yes. you, what you put out and what you don't or, you know, how you show up or how you don't. Like, you know, me personally, I, you know, like I know like, you know, say you're supposed to post this many times and blah, 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 and all of this, right? And you're supposed to go live this many times. And I don't have a problem at this point with going live, but 
I just have a personal thing. I don't like to talk when I don't have anything to say. I'm still an introvert at heart. And I'm still, you know, there's still that kind of shy part of myself. And it's not that I don't, I can't get up there and talk. I mean, we're doing this right now. I just, I feel very strong. I hate when people just talk in the talk. Like, I just hate that. Like, I'm not a, you know, a, you know, they say introverts don't like small talk. I'm not a small talk person. Like, we could talk about life. We could talk about business. We could talk about all kinds of deep things. For hours, but once you start talking about like you know pop culture or you yeah. know <laughs> the weather and stuff like that, I'm just like, oh, okay, it's hot. It's August, okay. <laughs> like you know, I just that's not you know I I will tend to you know be quiet in those moments, but that is a part of who I am. So you know, as I I can be open and I can be vulnerable, but at the same time. I can also just be like, you know what? I don't want to share that. Or I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be in the public right now. You know, kind of like, you know, what you said about the the young lady, you know, she's losing her child and she's crying. And maybe she don't want that moment captured to be seen a thousand times. And, you know, that moment she might not want in in the public. That doesn't mean that she didn't feel it. That doesn't mean it didn't happen. But, and it doesn't mean that she wasn't vulnerable. She still shared her full vulnerability without having to then put herself out there in a way that she was not comfortable. So vulnerability stretches you, you know, but it doesn't mean that you have to be in a space that you feel uncomfortable. Right. And one of the things that, you know, we will do in, in we do in the incubator is with the story structure, every detail doesn't go in it. Because sometimes when you look at the story itself, you know, the beginning, the middle and the end, that may have happened over a course of three weeks. Right. But you're telling it not in real time, but the composite of it. And if you want to tell more at another time, you can, but at least you have the structure to help you go from, does this make sense? Is the audience going to understand what, the point I'm trying to make here? How does it fit in the overall larger talk that I'm giving with my story? You know, again, now I know from, from you, remember I mentioned when I first met you, you weren't talking the whole time, but when you spoke, people paid attention. You take that same Danielle to your podcast and to your posting. So we know when you do something, pay attention, <laughs> you know, because it's going to be relevant and it's going to be something I need to hear and want to see right now, because you know that about yourself and people who know you go, well, that makes sense. That's the story of Danielle, you know, so we wait for your, for your wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just receive thinking, that. You, you don't have to comment. No comment necessary. Okay, all right. I'm just gonna <laughs> receive that. So I'm gonna start wrapping up, Monica, because I know me and you, we can. Oh, we can, I know. We can go. We can um, go, and we have we gone. Go. <laughs> so I bring on women to the show that I really, really enjoy, and so that's why when we start to get into conversation, the conversation can can go because you know and I I love it because I want you to see that person in that same way that I I see and love them. So wait, I'm going to I'm going to wrap it up for the sake of time. I have to have lunch eventually. No, just Yes, <laughs> no. So, um Okay, so here are our standard wrap-up questions. If y'all listen to the podcast, if you haven't listened to old episodes, go back and listen to old episodes. But all of our interview episodes, we ask these three standard questions. Okay, so Monica, tell me about your favorite pair of pajamas. Oh, well, I don't wear them anymore because well, I can't get in them. But anyway, uh, it was when, <laughs> when I got married, our honeymoon, I had these, this beautiful top and little shorts and, and the material was so soft and like silky. I just love it. And the color was vibrant. So oh, I, 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 I still have it. I still have it because I want to get back into it after you know, 35 okay. years. <laughs> All right. And I was now, adorable. I I love a soft pajama. That, that's like mm -hmm. my favorite. That's my, my number one criteria. 
Okay, so my time freedom allows me to spend quiet time with myself with a journal that's no lines and a beautiful ink pen so that I can write down my thoughts. And I don't like to have lines that I can put little clouds and little bubbles and mm -hmm. colors. So, oh, it's delicious. I love a good pen. Like that is like, like journals and pens. Like it's a, it's a weird obsession of mine and I have them everywhere. So I could totally dig mm -hmm. that. Like, you know, <laughs> oh goodness. I could, I, I, I'm envisioning a, um, sitting on the beach and yeah, just yeah, into the water yeah. type of thing. But yes, uh -huh. I love that. I love, love, love that. Okay, so what is the best advice that you could give to anyone seeking the profits in pajamas life? Mm. Know that it's possible, doable, and you deserve it. We're writing a new story for ourselves. Yes. yes. And we don't have to grind and hustle and do it the way it's been done before. New chapters, new stories, and you deserve to do it. You know, figure it out. You can do it. <laughs> and look, if you can't figure it out, I can help you figure it out. Coach Danny D will help you figure it out. I will help you to figure do. it out. <laughs> it, is, is, it is totally possible. And I think that that's the biggest hurdle is getting that mindset of knowing that it's possible because we're told otherwise. Right. And if you buy the story, I'm, I'm really in looking into story, but you know, the stories, and I'm gonna be quick about that, the stories that we're born into, mm -hmm. the story that we accept. Yes. The story we accept, but we know that there's something different for us and the story we rewrite. So yeah. if you want that time freedom, rewrite the story you've been telling yourself about whether or not it's possible. I love that. I absolutely love that <laughs> rewriting that story because that's really what it is. Is re reimagining things, re you know, and letting go, picking apart that story. You know, why do you believe it to be true? Where are the facts? You know, yeah. and yeah, I love that. And that's a different question. Well, what if it wasn't true? <laughs> Then what, would you do? <laughs> then what would you do? Right? What if, would you do? If, if you found out that that whole story was not true, then what would you do with your life? Wow. Yes. It Delicious. just opens up different doors. You know, it just, and you start to, you know, because people say, well, why, what do you mean you're going there? Are you doing this? Are you doing what? When you stop believing that story, you believe that you can do all of these things, even if it doesn't, all the way makes sense all of the time. It, right. it, it, it It's going to make sense when it's supposed to make sense. It didn't make sense for me to sign up for a public speaking class when I know I did not want to <laughs> be in a public speaking. Right. That did not make sense, but it totally did. And I'm glad that I did it. And the journey that ensued from that Um has been so fruitful. I'm still in the incubator, so we I don't even know the end, end game of that, but just even just starting to work with Monica from that point to now has, you know, been so, such a beautiful experience for the reasons that she created the class, but for so many other reasons that right. I didn't even expect. Right, and you're part of that talking to myself and saying you are a coach. The experiences, and, and probably because I didn't have experiences with coaching, right. either being coached or coaching others, now it's a delightful, I can't see it any other way now. So I see very clearly what coaching and supporting people with their stories, what it looks like beyond having a TV camera or a microphone, that there are other ways for me to continue this and to give them the you know, encouragement and the tools to go out and tell their stories with dignity and impact. Always with dignity, because dignity, dignity is synonymous with Monica Pierre. And even before I knew you, you know, I mean, I feel like I knew you my whole entire life, but that was just my, you know, my interpretation. But before I actually met you in person and knew you, 
um, dignity was one of those things that was always, um, you know, a part of who you are. And that, that, that is, you know, um, projected, you know, without you ever saying that in words, like, mm -hmm. you, you know, I, I can remember listening to you on the radio in the morning. And like you said, it was, you know, R&B and, you know, hip hop station. And so, you know, and then, you know, CJ's, you know, funny and the jokes, but you were that, you know, that, that, that voice of what was, you know, you know, back then, you know, you, you were, you were giving people motivation before it was popular, you know what I'm saying? And, and the way that you delivered it and the way that you carried yourself gave a model for how you can be, you know, you can, you can still be in part of the environment and a part of the culture, but also just bring a certain level of elevation, you know, in, in how you, your, your presence, so thank you for that. Oh, that is that is so that thank you. I received that. I will I won't thank you. <laughs> just, just, just take it because I'm not going to twist the words because they that's that's from the heart. Just just thank just, you. I feel just it. Take it in. Just take it in. But um I'm so honored to have you here. Like that's like, you know, I'm I'm just this is a you know surreal in a lot of different ways. So I'm honored to be here and you know be having this conversation with you. And um, I want you to tell the audience how they can get in touch with you and, um, you know, tell them a little bit more about how if they're interested in joining the incubator program, how can they um, do that as well? I would love to have a conversation with uh, you about the Tell Your Story Incubator. It's about eight weeks, but it's really about uncovering that story and, and telling that story. Uh, please, I'd love to get you on my schedule. And we can talk about it, answer any questions that you have about it. But on the other end of it, you will have that story that you would have crafted. You would have practiced, rehearsed, and found different ways in which to do it. And I want to be that guide with you, that support with you, that coach with you, especially if you have something coming up in the fall or you want to actually get that story out and work through whether or not you're worried about the impact or if people are going to judge you or that you have no story to tell, that's what we're going to work with on the, with the incubator. So may I give my email address? Yes, ma'am. Monica at pierreprinciple.com, P-I-E-R-R-E-P-R-I-N-C-I-P-L-E.com. It'll be in the show notes. And I will send you a link to my schedule and we will absolutely have that conversation. I run into people all the time, Danielle, and they're doing some big things, whether it's their own business, whether it's their balloon business, whether it's you know, getting on the, elected to the school board, they have stories to tell. And if you've been telling a story, but you want to see how you can even tell it at a, at a different level, a deeper level, then definitely the Tell Your Story Incubator is something for you to consider. And I'm the kind of coach that knows that we're all grown. And when the moment is right, you will figure it out. You'll make the investment of time. You'll make the investment of the money. You'll make the investment of yourself. And you will put that story out there because the world needs it, not just for today, but 50, 75, and 100 years from now, there'll be a Danielle and a Monica, whatever form of media is going to be 100 years from now, talking about what you created and what you had the courage to talk about and the story you had the courage to share. So yeah. let's get it out there. Let's tell these stories. Yes, I absolutely love that. And you know, just on a, the, the most simple level, that inspiration piece, because, you know, I know for me, a lot of stuff started making sense when I was in circles with other people. And, you know, even when I was in your um, original program and I was talking to somebody that's been in, you know, the industry for years and we had a conversation and they shared their thoughts. And I was like, oh my God, are you reading my mind? Mm. But that was that was one of those moments of this person is, you know, 
so many light years ahead of where I am, but feeling the same things, having the same emotions and experiences. And so because we don't share stories, sometimes we feel isolated as business owners. We feel like everyone gets it but me. Correct. Correct. We, you know, we feel like we're struggling alone. So even if it's something as simple as, you know, because I always, you know, ask my audience to go out and do something to play big. Even if your play big for today is just to say out loud to someone, you know what? I struggle with this. Because there's somebody that is looking at you and thinking that you have it 100% together and they don't even know that this is a thing you struggle with and it's going to make them feel whole by mm -hmm. hearing it. Oh, that is big. That is good. Yes. You yes. know, and, yeah. and then there's somebody who felt like that who can tell you how they got from feeling like that to how they feel today. So there's there's power in that exchange of story, even on just a personal. Yes. Yes. Oh, that is beautiful. Well, look, you've been in the incubator. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have, I have. And um, but yeah, I want to thank you, Monica, for being here and 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 sharing your your love and your passion with us. I I, I am so excited about you know just um, I'm just excited about. I hope that this resonates with the audience and they have the courage to step forward and share their stories. So thank you for that. I'm going to share all of your information in the um, show notes so that we can make sure that people can get in touch with you as far as the incubator program. Um, before we get off, I do want to share, I am, um, right now, I am enrolling in my next round of the luxury brand, um, the luxury brand six-week intensive. So that's going to be starting on August 17th. And with that intensive, what we're doing is we are, you know, we are talking about, you know, that brand. What is it? What does it look like? What are you, wh who are you and what do you want to, you know, get out of your business? And the reason why we're talking about that is because we need to connect you to that ideal client. And that's where we're going to be uncovering who is that client. How do we, you know, really connect to that client and then ultimately, how do we build your business around that so that you can enjoy that business again? So that you can, you know, so that you're not feeling like, oh my God, they're, you know, I'm doing all the things and trying to figure this out. I'm committing to, you know, like Monica said before, that person that I had, I know I had no business signing, but when you don't have that clarity, that's when you make those decisions. And as we gain that clarity, we start to make decisions that help us to navigate easier and help us to build a business that we really love and have that time freedom so that we can write in our journals with our nice pens. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, so that's what we're going to be working on in a luxury brand six week intensive. If that's um, if if you are looking to create that luxury brand, um, you can go to coachdannyd.com and there's going to be um, a link also in the show notes for you to sign up for that, get in that um, in that intensive, so you can start really getting to the point where you are profiting from your business, but you're also profiting in your life because now you have you have the money coming in but you also have the time freedom and that's where the beauty happens and you're not working non-stop just to get ends meet so um i just wanted to share that with you again thank monica for being here and i will see you guys next week with another topic Thank you for listening to the Profits in Pajamas podcast. I hope you got some great tips to start working with ease. Want to stay connected? Follow me at Your Workflow on Instagram. For more information about building your luxury brand, register for my upcoming luxury brand workshop at coachdannyd.com.